Today we're gonna make some beef stew. And uh, my stew is a little bit different than most people because this is the way my mama and my granny and all of them made it. We make ours with tomatoes. So if you don't like tomatoes, you can just leave that out. But to get started, you're gonna need a big pot. <laughs> Seems like stew grows when you make it. So we're gonna get a big pot and we're going to put some olive oil in it. I mean, I would say probably about three, oh, two to three tablespoons, okay? And we wanna get that really hot. And so we'll put that in there. We'll turn our fire on. And then we're gonna to get to seasoning our meat. Now the meat that I use um, is, um, some people call it beef tips or stew meat or whatever, but uh, you can also use a chuck roast and just uh, cut it up into your your little squares or however, however you want it. This was a little bit fattier than I usually like. I'm not really happy with my butcher right now. I had to trim all of that off. But so this is a little, little more fatty than I usually um, make it. Okay, so to start out, we got our, our um, oil um, heating. <laughs> and we are going to put just about, oh, a few dashes of uh, paprika in our meat, okay? Now, isn't, this is not gonna make it hot. This is just going to make it uh, just have a good flavor. And then we're going to put about, um, oh, I would probably say about a half of a teaspoon of salt in here. I'm just gonna unscrew mine and just put it on here. These are my new salt and pepper shakers that Granny got me. I'm real excited about them because I really like them. I've had my eye on some like this and I wanted some with the big, with big holes in it, but I'm gonna go ahead and open it just for sake of time. I'm gonna sit there and shake and shake. Cause I like using coarse pepper. And so I wanted some with uh, some big holes and these, this one has wonderful holes, big holes in it. Okay, so our stuff is still good. Okay, we've got this on there and I'm also gonna use some garlic powder. Now we like garlic, so I'm probably gonna put at least a teaspoon in there, okay? Now we're gonna add salt, pepper, garlic to the actual soup. So uh, obviously we'll use more than that, but for right now, this is what we're gonna put on the meat. Cause seasoned meat, oh, you don't wanna just get a piece of bull meat. You wanna get some seasoned meat when you get a bite. You can use a spoon, you can use your hands. Uh, get that all. And if you think you need a little bit more, just put a little bit more on there. Cause it sure won't hurt, especially on your salt. Now, I am gonna be careful with the salt because I'm gonna use some bouillon and bouillon tends to be salty, but uh, you know how meat is, you want it to be salty. Okay. This is almost to the temperature that we want. Now in this, I'm gonna show, put this to the side so you can see. Um, I'm gonna use frozen vegetables. By all means, you can use uh, fresh. And, uh, and then I'm gonna use some tomatoes that we canned. And this is a variety of different tomatoes, but it's just, just stewed tomatoes. If you wanna put stewed tomatoes in from the grocery store, that's fine. But these are just some we canned. And then I'm going to use chicken bouillon and some beef bouillon. We're going to use some bay, a couple of bay leaves, some thyme, some regular garlic, a few potatoes, and an onion. All right, this is probably, let me drop one down. Yeah, it's got the sizzle. So let's go ahead and put that down in there. And we're just going to brown. Brown these for about three minutes. Okay, I my meat is to the doneness that I want. Really not done at all, just break. And we're gonna take it out of here. Now don't worry if you've got some little uh, crusty things on the bottom of your pan. It's not gonna burn, don't worry about that. 
Because what we're going to do is we're going to put our onions in here. And we're going to brown our onions with those drippings. Now, if you're using fresh vegetables, you can by all means use, uh, put, put the, the carrot, celery um, in with the onions at this point. But since I'm using frozen, we're just going to do the onions. Okay. When you put those onions, it kind of starts to get glazing it. And then in a moment, after we've cooked these onions for just a minute, we're going to stick a little water in there, which I'm going to go ahead and do now. Just a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. That pepper is working. And I'm probably just going to put like a cup, okay? And that will help it just go ahead and deglaze. But you do want to caramelize your onions and you want to take advantage of these drippings here. Okay, so we poured that in there. And when you do that, that just comes clean from the bottom. Just amazing, it's like magic. Okay, so we got our, our um, onions in there. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to start putting our spices in. And I'm going to put in a tablespoon of beef broth, okay? This is just the, the powder kind. I'm gonna put one of those in there because I, if you only wanna use beef, do two, but I wanna use some chicken on them in there too. Okay, and then we're going to put um, some garlic. And I'm going to put a whole spoon in there, probably a good tablespoon, maybe a heaping. Okay, like that. I use just the one in the produce section. Okay, now we're just going to put about four cups of water at this point. I got eight cups all together. I'm going to stir that around. Now, if y'all want me to make the traditional stew, I can do that at a different time where it just has uh, potatoes and carrots and celery and kind of a thick gravy and, your, of course, your meat. If y'all would be interested in that, y'all just leave me a comment. But uh, this, this one's going to be like like I grew up on. Okay, so I think that's good. We're gonna go ahead and put our meat back in. Now this meat is not tender. You know, a roast is not tender until it cooks. So, we don't want a whole bunch of water in there right now. So I am going to let this really not boil, but a good, almost boil like a simmer between a simmer and a boil and we're going to do uh let that cook for about an hour okay and uh and then we're going to add our other ingredients so let me show you how much water is in there okay see that not not much uh just maybe barely touching the over the meat but we want to we want to keep, uh, we don't want to water it down, okay? So we're going to let that simmer low, 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 low boil for about an hour, and we'll be right back. Okay, I've had the, a lid on it this whole time. And uh, just check it every once in a while, and just make sure you don't need enough, um, some more liquid, and that could either be broth or in my case i'm using the powdered bouillon so i just added water okay now you can taste your meat and just see if it's tender enough if it's not cook it another 30 minutes so it'll be that'll be fine you won't you don't it don't have to be 
all the way to the tenderness that you want because we're going to be cooking the vegetables probably for about another hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me rinse off my spoon. Mmm. Very good. Okay. So at this point, we are going to add our tomatoes. And, um, like I said, if you don't like tomatoes, then you don't have to do it. This is tomatoes out of our garden, so we're real proud of them. So there's our tomatoes. And then I'm using, uh, this is two pounds of uh, mixed vegetables. And then I'm also going to put another pound of corn. And then I have a couple of bags that just have just a tiny bit in them. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Now you don't wanna add your water or your liquid until you kind of see what, you know, cause these frozen vegetables, they're, they're gonna have moisture. And we don't like, we don't like water down still. We like, uh, we like it to be kind of thick. You know, we don't want just a bunch of juice. You want something in every bite. Some, some, some soups are good to have a lot of liquid, but I don't think a stew is. So this is just gonna be a tiny bit over uh, two pounds on this. Probably, I would say about three, but I just wanna go ahead and use up, use up these bags because they've been in my freezer a while and they need to get used, okay? Let me stir this and see how the liquid's looking. I'm gonna show you how it looks. Okay, see how you can just barely, it's just barely covered, all right? Okay, we're not going to put any more liquid in it. I, has, I still have you know, I started off with eight cups. So I'm just gonna save that. And as this boils, then I may add, may add it, you know, as needed. But we don't want to add too much. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add our thyme. And we're going to put about a tablespoon. That's all I have left. If I had more, I love the smell of that. If I had more than that, I might would put a little, like a heaping tablespoon. We're going to put two bay leaves. And you'll have to remember to fish those out before serving. Okay. All right. Now we're going to let this um, stay on the same temperature as it's been all this time simmer like that low simmer boil you don't want to boil it you want to stew it so uh we're going to put our lid back on for about another hour oh my potatoes forgot my potatoes there you go Let me give it another stir i knew something was wrong didn't look right <laughs> all right so now that I added those potatoes, I'm going to add a little bit more water because there's, it's not just barely covered, but you just want to barely cover it. That eight cups may just be perfect. So I just barely covered it again. And really when your potatoes get done, it's going to be done. But I do it for a little bit longer just, just because to me, the longer it goes, it just kind of gets better. All right, we're going to put the lid on and uh, start some cornbread. And we'll be back in about an hour. Okay, so we're going to 
open this up. It's probably been a good 45 minutes. And let me show you how much water. You see that? I don't know if you can see with the fog of the phone, but anyway, um, we're going to add just a tad bit of water. <laughs> um, I only have this much left, so I'm going to add that. And this is also a good time to taste it. Because you might want some more um, salt, seasoning, whatever. So let's give it a good stir. Adding that water may have cooled it down where I can. Now, since I have it on such a low bowl, the potatoes are almost done, but not yet. So let's just taste this. Hmm. It needs something. I think I'm going to put some more broth. I'm going to put another tablespoon of beef broth in there. It's good, but I think it'll be better with uh, another tablespoon in there. And I'm going to test it again. It kind of needed more salt, but that broth is very salty. Then we try it before we add some salt. You can always add more salt to your bowl. That made all the difference in the world. So for the recipe that I am doing for the size, um, you're, you'll need a... Uh, two tablespoons of this and then of course your tablespoon of uh of chicken it doesn't need any more salt it doesn't need any pepper um it actually just is delicious 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 but i'm gonna let it keep on uh cooking and so we ended up using eight cups of water now if you are using fresh vegetables you may have to use a little bit more because uh, with the frozen, we did get more condensation. So keep that in mind. Okay, we're going to let it go for another 30 minutes or however long. And we'll come back and have some. Okay, I am thinking that this is probably done. And it is. The potatoes are falling apart. And I bet this meat is tender. Let me just get a bowl and get uh get this some up. The water level is perfect. Let me show you. Hopefully, it'll show you without fogging up. See there? It's just perfect level. You don't want a bunch of water. So let me get a ladle. Get some out. And there is a one of the bay leaves. So we'll throw that out. Let me get me a spoon. Got my uh, iron board in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, iron some clothes. Okay. Oh, this looks so good. It is going to be so hot, but I am so excited about this. It's been a while since we made stew, and it is chilly outside, so stew is always good on a chilly day. Mmm. Mmm. Hot. <laughs> the meat's tender. That was a little piece of potato <coughs> and a little piece of meat. Delicious. Oh, I can't wait for Caleb to have it. Caleb loves stew. So okay, just look at that. Doesn't that look wonderful? We've got our tomato in there. And you can just see all of the stuff doesn't have a ton of juice. It's not watered down. 
it just looks delicious. If you liked our video, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Bye.